Hello, and in this video, I'm going to be going over basic CSS from the free code camp curriculum. And so um, I'm going to go through each one of these and then at the same time expand a little bit more if I can. So let's go ahead and get started. Introduction to basic CSS. So if you can think about it, we, just, we, we went over HTML, hypertext markup language. Think of HTML as your house um, with the frames and then think of CSS as, you know, going in and painting it and making it look beautiful. And that's what cascading style sheets are, is, is, is just a way to, to, to display text um, and content that you write in HTML as it says there. So some of the things that you can control with CSS, you know, the, the color, the font, position, and meaning you can move things around, the spacing, you can put space between objects uh, or elements, sizing, decoration, transitions. And we're going to go through some of these today, not all of them. Um, so there are three main ways to apply styling, and one is through using the style attribute. You can also use um, inline style, and then you can also use the style tags in the style blocks. Um, and we're gonna go through these things. So let's go ahead to the first lesson. And in this first lesson, it talks about changing the color of text. And you can do that with style. So as soon as this renders, we can I can show you that. So let's say I can target a specific element. So let's say, for example, I wanted to target this things cats love, and I wanted to make this color red. So I can go into that particular element and I can say style equal. And then I just say color red. So the color style uh, property is called color. And then you can just give it whatever color you think. And as you can see here, it says red. It's it, the color is red. I can change it to, let's say green. And there you have it green. Um, red, or let's, you know, brown. So there you have it. So. It allows you to pick any element that you want on a page and then change that specific colors, that specific elements um, color, you know, whatever text is within there. So in this um, example here, this challenge, it's saying change your H2 element style so that its text color is red. So we're gonna go up to the H2 element, which is right here. And then if you remember, it's style, that's the prop, that's, I mean, style is the attribute, equal. The property is color, and we're gonna say red. Run. Oh, okay, that's another thing. It always has to end with a semicolon, so I forgot a semicolon. Um, a lot of people don't use semicolon. It's really an, an option, you don't have to. But in free code camp, um, you have to use a semicolon. So if I run test, and there you have it. Let's go to the next challenge. Okay, it's not submitting. So what we're gonna do, since it's not, we're gonna just, let me back out the learn and go to the next one. I'm not sure why it's doing that. Let me let's try this again. Let's do this. Let's go to this one. And this is saying use CSS selectors to style elements. Now, when you create a CSS, what they call is a selector, you use something called a style block like you see here. And the reason you want to use style blocks is because let's say you had a huge web page, you had several elements, and you wanted certain elements 
to have the same color. So let's say, for example, I had, you know, maybe 18 H2 tags. It would be a pain to go through each H2 tag and do this. You know, style equal to color red. And then you have to go through each 18, all 18 to do that. But there's a quicker way to do that. And a quicker way to do that is to use what is called style block. So what you do is you come up here to the top. And then you say, you create your tag, style, and let's say I wanted to target all of the P tags. So you would do something to this effect here. So P, you have to put it between braces, then I can say color red and as you can see everything that had my p tag turned to red green so the style and when you do it this way um it allows you to target more than one element so that's the the, the good thing about a style block so let's go down here and see what the challenge is. Um, so that's an example. I, I did a, a P instead of a H2. Uh, it says delete your H2 element style attribute. So we're gonna delete our H2 element. And then what we're gonna do next is, it says, and instead create a CSS style block Add the necessary CSS, turn all H2 elements to blue. So we're gonna come here and this is going to be H2. We're gonna target just H2, H2. And then we wanna make them all blue, blue. So there you have it. We only have one H2 and that's the this right here. So it's, it's blue. So let's run that test and see what happens. Oop, oh, I forgot the um, semicolon, semicolon, all right. So that's, okay, why does that not work? Okay. It's not moving forward. Let me just go here. Let's go to the next one, which is CSS class. Okay. It says classes are reusable styles that can be added to HTML elements. So before we were targeting just elements. Um, and you can target different elements in a different way by using what is called a class declaration. And all that means is just you, you have, a, you, you give your certain style a name and then you provide that name to any, cl um, element and it'll take upon that style. So let's say for example, um, I wanted to target just certain, you know, certain, list items so what i would do is i would create a style and i'm just going to call it a list item so what you do is you it's it starts with a period list item and you can give it whatever name you want and you go down to the list item that you want and you can say class equal list item and as you can see over here on the right hand side, it targeted just that specific list item. I can come down here and I can do the same thing. So let me copy this, copy. See, right there. And it's on whatever element that you target. So I can even come here and, it'll, and change everything blue. See, everything turned blue. So that's what um, that class does. So the challenge says, inside your style element, change the H2 selector to red text. So we're gonna change this to period red 
dash text. And then what we're gonna do, it says change from red from blue to red. And then give your H2 element a class. So we come in here, class equal dot, nope, no dot, just red dash text. And, and as you can see, the color changed. Run test. Okay. And I hope that you all are doing this on your own. Make sure you also go through the go through free code camp yourself. The more practice you get, the, the better you will become at this. So make sure you do that. So let me go to this next one here. Um, style multiple elements. Okay. So this is the style multiple elements with the CSS class. So it's the same concept uh, concept as before. Um, and that's the, the benefit of a, of a CSS of, of classes is you can style multiple elements as I showed you before. So I'm going to come down, it says apply your red text element to the P element. So I'm going to come down here to the P element. The first P element class equal red text. And there you have it change. Oh. Uh, I thought that was my first. P. Oh, sorry, wrong one. They want this P element. Click here to view more. So this needs to be red, not this one. So let me go back down here, and I'm just gonna copy, cut that out, come up here, and just paste it in here. And as you can see, it turned red. So. So let me go to the next one. Font size. Now, this is how you control the size of your font. So it says font size is controlled by the font size CSS property like this. So the um, property you will use is font dash size, and then it'll be in pixels. So you can, this can be any number. So let's say for example, I come in here I'm using this red text and I'm going to say font size and I'm going to make it really big so you can notice the difference. Let's say 90 pixels up oh, and there you have it. See 90 pixels. See how big that is. But usually when you set these things, it's usually you, you, you want to do something small like uh, 12 pixels. Oh, excuse me. So as you can see, the font size of that, of this text shrunk. Let me do it again so you can see. So if I change it to 14, you see how it got bigger. So that's the property that you use when you want to increase your font size. Um, so let's go down here to the challenge. It says inside the same style tag that contains your red text class, create an entry for P elements and set the font size to 16 pixels. So we're gonna come down here. Do you remember how to set to do that? So it says the P elements, opening and closing braces. And then we're gonna say, um, is it contains? Okay, so color. I'm sorry, inside the same style tag that contains your red text, create an entry for P elements, okay. I'm sorry. So we're going to say font size 16 pixels. That's right. Oh, and there we have it. Okay, let's do a few more of these. Okay, so let me scroll down. Font size, font family. So in this, um, here's another property that they're introducing us to. It is the font family. So 
if you wanted a different style font, you can use the font family property. And in this example, they have font family sans serif. I'm not even sure if I'm pronouncing that right. So this says make all your P elements use a monospace font. So look at this P elements, our P elements. And I'm going to come down here and watch it change. So font family property, right? Mono space. And you saw how you saw how that changed. So that changed. If I said sans serif, see that change. Okay, but let me put it back to mono space for the challenge. Let me run test. And there you have it. Let me scroll down. Image Google font. Okay. So sometimes you may not want the regular fonts. Every browser that you use, whether it's, um, you know, Chrome or IE or Firefox, um, it has its own standard fonts that comes with the, uh, with the internet. So what if you wanted to import, like it says, import a Google font or another type of font. It doesn't have to come from Google. Um, and the way that you do that, it says here, Google Fonts is a, one of the fonts you can use is, um, Google Fonts is a free library of web fonts that you can use in your CSS by referencing the, U, the fonts URL. So what we're going to do, and... Let me erase, let me remove this here. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, so, so the way to do that, you have to reference like a library. So imagine going to a library and you go to the section that's called fiction. And in that fiction section of the library, you have all the books that are fiction so the same thing we have to reference all of the google fonts so this here is sort of like a library and what you do is you add that library to the top of your file and once you add that library to the top of your file you will have access to all of the different fonts that this library has and this library being Google API. So you have access to whatever fonts, uh, is included in this library. You have access to it. So let me scroll down and it says to use, um, it has this font called lobster font. And in order to use this lobster font, all you do is the same thing is font family property and then the family name, which is lobster and then the generic name. So what happens is if this family name doesn't exist for whatever reason, the fallback is the generic name. And it says the generic name is optional and is a fallback font in case the other specified font is not available. So let's go over that. So, Let me take this out and let me take out, let's take this out as well. Let's say this is monospace, monospace. Okay. So monospace, so the, the, family we want is lobster so watch watch what happens so right now as you can see it's it's monospace right and i'm going to go ahead and add the lobster family so it's font family and then lobster and as you can see it change and you can have um, multiple families so let's say watch what happens when i remove this library so you can s understand what i mean by fallback font so when I remove this library, 
you see it falls back to the mono space because the lobster doesn't exist anymore because the library is missing and so it fell back to mono space so when I put lobster back it comes back so let's scroll down here to the challenge it says create a font family CSS rule that uses the lobster font and ensure that it will be applied to your h2 element so we have my h2 element right here and then this needs to be lobster we're just going to change this here there you go okay so I hope you've I hope that all made sense to you. You know, make sure you go through yourself and do as many of these as you can before our next CSS workshop. Um thanks for watching. Bye.